Tonight, I want to talk to you about the history of Main Street's indoor theaters. Uh, when I first started looking at this, I thought, okay, yeah, we got the uptown, we got the wings. Cool, let me see what, <laughs> well, was I wrong? Okay, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> There's that projector. <laughs> okay, the first uh, movie establishment was in 1919. Mr. B.B. B. Bowen and his wife moved to Grand Prairie and they started the Air Dome. Uh, the Air Dome, it was, you know, no roof, just a vacant lot. Um, I'm going to have to... Uh, I had cataract surgery, so I have to keep seeing where I'm going. Uh, it was basically, it, it was a drive-in, but they put seats out there and you went and sat. And they had a projector that put it up on the screen. And it's just like going to a drive-in movie somewhere, but you had seats to sit in. Uh, it operated three nights a week. Needless to say, it had to be at night. And Mr. Bowen, the way he got customers, he'd walk up and down Main Street blowing a horn, saying, hey, come, come see my movies, you know, whatever. That worked out uh, really well. Here is where the Air Dome was. Thank goodness there's nothing anywhere advertising the Air Dome that tells where the Air Dome was. I mean, no articles in the paper, nothing. Thankfully, we have these, what are called Sanborn maps. I don't know if y'all have heard about them. There's a company called the Sanborn Company that would go around towns and they would draw all the buildings in that town. And then they get color code them, uh, masonry brick where the pink, the yellows were wood frame. And then they would use that information to companies selling fire insurance and see what kind of risk there was. So we're extremely fortunate. The Library of Congress has, for Grand Prairie, they have the 1920 Sanborn map, they have the 1929, I believe it's the 1945. 43. 43. And then we have... 43 and 53. We have, okay, we have two here. But what turned out great the exact ones I needed, we had. So we're able to find this information exactly where the air dome was. This is Center Street, this is Main, and this is West, 110 West Main. They first opened March 29th, 1919, um, advertising in the Grand Prix paper, and Mr. Bowen found out pretty quick that we don't always have good weather. <laughs> and they decided, we've got to do something for when it's raining or when it's cold or when it's snowing or whatever. So he partnered with uh, Mr. Pitcock and they opened an indoor theater. Now, again, this is all about indoor theaters, but I had to bring up the air dome just to get us to where our first indoor was. The first indoor was the Lyric. Uh, again, it shows here where it was. It was, here's the air dome. It's across the street and down where the Lyric was. So it worked out very well. Uh, they showed movies three nights a week in the air dome, but if the weather was bad, then they'd go across the street to the Lyric and show their movies over there, which you know, worked out pretty well for them. Mr. Bowen, <laughs> he was an innovator. <coughs> he was always trying to do something with his theaters to make them a little bit better. And so one of the things that he did, he decided that the Lyric Theater wasn't <coughs> big enough. And again, it didn't seat a whole lot of people. But he said, you know, because there's no air conditioning <coughs> and it gets kind of stuffy in there during the night, you know, even with the front doors open. You know, there, it's stuffy. So he said, well, I'll, do, I'll just tear out the back wall. And we'll let, I think it says somewhere in here, 
an abundance of fresh air <laughs> and hot nights. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's great. That's what he would do. So he was always looking at something to do to make things a little cooler. Uh, again, they had a pretty good run. They kept showing. Keep in mind, these were silent movies. But they would ran for the next several years, aired on lyric, aired on lyric, you know, back and forth, depending on the weather. A <laughs> big thing and what brought us to giving you popcorn and drinks tonight. <laughs> this was late February 1, 1924. Mr. Bowen was the first one in the area to put in a concession stand. That was big. <laughs> you know, we found out not only can I make money selling tickets, I can make money selling drinks and popcorn and candies. And, and again, you can't go to a theater now without one of those in there. So again, another Mr. Bowen accomplishment. Another thing that I thought was really funny and interesting, they had a movie coming called Midnight Alarm. They were going to show that as a benefit for our volunteer fire department, which, you know, good. Let's, whatever I, money I can make, I'm going to give it to you volunteer firefighters. Well, how can I get most people there? Well, the fire department says, well, hey, there's this old building over here, so we can go burn it down. <laughs> and so that's what they did. Thursday afternoon, they invited people to come up and watch them burn the building down and use their hoses, put it out. And then once they were through that, now come to the theater and watch the movie. So again, this guy was, he was pretty much an innovative genius when it comes to this kind of stuff. Okay. Now, unfortunately, things didn't go super smooth. He got some competition. I don't know how much competition there was, but again, it shows up here on July 4th, 1924, the Grand Prairie Picture Show opened. I had never in my life heard of the Grand Prairie <laughs> Picture Show. These are the only two advertisements I ever saw for it. I, I mean, I spent countless hours going through Grand Prairie newspapers. These are the only two I ever found. So, I know it was here. <laughs> I don't have a clue where it was located. Um, again, we didn't have the Sanborn map that ever showed this you know, time period. So I don't know where it was. Uh, less than a year after it opened, there's a gentleman from Grapevine came and bought the Grand Prix Picture Show and he renamed it the palace once again these are the only two program ads that i've ever found on the palace but apparently uh it was a first-run theater because they had tom mix <laughs> everybody knew who tom mix was back in the day again i don't have any idea how long this theater lasted, and I've never found anything that shows a closing date. Uh, we just know it just disappeared. Now, because the palace, the Grand Prairie Picture Show and the palace came out, the Lyric may have had some problems getting enough people and keeping their head above water. So after um, 1924, I never found another ad for the Lyric Theater. Now, the theory is that it was bought by Mr. John Walker in 1925, and he renamed it the Texas Theater. So now we've got another <coughs> theater in Grand Prairie. The Texas opened October 9 of 1925, and this was the first movie they showed. Uh, the Nightlife of New York. Sounds like a real fun movie. Uh, okay, John. My pointer is not, not pointing anymore. <laughs> He's a technology man. Yes. 
the computer got tired of listening to me. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. It changed. Oh, man. It's my magnetic person. <laughs> okay, again, here's another Sanborn map. And it shows you, again, the location of the Texas Theater is in the same location that the Lyric Theater was. That's why I know being the smart guy I am, I figured, <laughs> well, he had to have bought the lyric and put the Texas right there. Again, the same location uh, that we had. Now, about this time, uh, Mr. Walker decided he wanted to build a new Texas theater. And so he bought some land. Uh, in the paper, it says he bought the land just east of the bakery. Well, I, did, I had, didn't have a clue where the bakery was in town. Well, guess what? There's the bakery. So it's like, okay, right here is where he built the Texas Theater. Built a brand new theater there. Uh, he opened it November 14th with you know these different features. Um, the first year that the Texas Theater was finally listed in the Daily Film Yearbook, which is a yearbook published, I'm assuming in Hollywood, that lists every theater in the United States. Well, the Texas Theater finally got listed in there in 1927. Now, here's the big thing. Mr. Walker, again, always innovating, always changing things. In 1929, he brought all this new equipment, this you know, new ideas to the Texas Theater, and he began showing talkies. You know, up to this point, it's all silent movies. The first talkie that uh, he showed at the Texas was Wise Girls. I haven't watched it. Don't know how good it is. <laughs> but that showed on November 18th of 1929. Now, question for you. Anybody know what was the first talking movie? I don't know. Singing in the Rain. I see hands way back there. Snow White. What? Snow White. No. Nope. Nope. Uh, Al Jolson was in it. Yes. He's a jazz singer. Bingo. No, the jazz singer. Yeah. Al Jolson. Oh, Al Jolson. Oh. This is the first, <laughs> the first talking okay. movie in the United States. Now, that opened in 1927. So Mr. Walker was two years behind, but then again, being from small town of Grand Prairie, I would assume it takes two years for all the new stuff, the newer stuff to get there. Now, the big problem the Texas had, <laughs> it had a, a terrible, terrible run. In 1930, uh, the first of several tragedies struck where the Texas burned down. Uh, and I like Mr. Walker, his, his sense of humor. He still puts an ad in the paper that <laughs> says, what's showing? <laughs> Nothing right now, but we will. You know, so again, the sense of humor, uh, and he did. He rebuilt, uh, it came back um, you know, just as good as it was before. He finally sold it in 1943 to a gentleman named Roy Sparling. Roy was in the theaters everywhere. He owned the, the Texan and Mesquite, the Urban and Urbandale, uh, one in Pleasant Grove, one in Arlington. Uh, he was all over the place. So he bought the Texas. But again, this article, and again, this article came from the Lubbock Avalanche newspaper. <laughs> there was nothing in Grand Prairie because we didn't have a lot of papers at the time, but it completely burned down again. This was in 1940, uh, now 1943. Uh, to give Mr. Starling credit, even though he had like four other theaters, he still rebuilt the one here, which it, you know says a lot about the man. Um, in 1948, he leased it to the Silver Brothers. 
I don't know if anybody knows who the Silver Brothers are. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> several people did. did you, you better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the Silver Brothers, uh, along with their sister, Helen Fisher, uh, they came in and leased the Texas Theater. Uh, we don't know when it closed. <coughs> I've never found an article that said anything about, you know, here's the last movie or anything that gave an indication. Now, 1943, when they did this, that was a big year for theaters here. In Grand Prairie, on the two block area from 100 block of East Main, 100 block of West Main, we had four theaters at one time. <laughs> That's unbelievable for a city this size. And, and again, think about when was that? What was going on in 1943? World War II. Yeah, World War II. So I don't know if this was just a way of getting people's minds off the war or a lot of the movies showed little blurbs about what was happening in the war. Maybe people like to go get the updates from there. But at the time, there were four separate theaters. Again, you show uh, the Wings, the Grand, the Morgan, and then the Texas. It had moved down on this end of Maine. Now the wings, again, a lot of a lot of you know the wings because a lot of us were. It was around when we were, you know, younger. Uh, it's built in 1942. They said it built in an old grocery store. Now some of the research that I did, and I'm not 100% positive, but I'm about 99% sure that the old grocery store that it was in was Massey's grocery store. Anybody in here know Ola Massey? Yes. Ola Massey's parents owned Massey Grocery Store. And so I'm thinking this was their old store. Again, I'm not 100% sure, but about 99% sure that it was. Now, the wings sold in 1948. Guess who bought it? The Silver Brothers. Um, they operated it, uh, upgraded, ran it until 1965. Uh, in 1965, they closed it. Uh, the marquee was removed and the theater finally torn down in 74. Now, the Grand Theater. This was another one again. Remember, this was just down from the wings, uh, a little bit east of the wings. It was first listed in the Film Daily Yearbook in 1942. It only seated 380 people. It was a fairly small theater. But it opened in 1941 as the Grand Prairie Theater and then changed in 1942 to the Grand Theater. The, this happened to be the movie that was just on the marquee that day, so stood up there for no particular reason. The Grand Theater across the street uh, no, no, not, as I was saying, just down a little bit east of the other one. <clears throat> Here was the Morgan. The Morgan was on the north side of the street. Uh, it was owned by a gentleman named Buck Morgan. And again, he opened it, and it was open for, you know, four years, 43 through 47. But there's no information that I could find on it anywhere about when it closed. But again, it was, uh, you know, if it had a four-year run, that's a pretty good run. You know, when you had three other theaters within a block of you that's giving you competition. Now again, the Morgan, once again, this is center. It's on the north side. Like I said, I couldn't have done without these Sanborn maps because every time you see one, it showed you know, this is where the movies were, this was the cinema, you know, this is the hardware store. So I was able to pinpoint the location of these pretty easily. The last theater we built uh, was Uptown. Uh, again, the Silver family, uh, they owned the Wings, they owned the Texas Theater. Uh, they decided there's a market here with four theaters and all of them getting business, there's a market here for an upscale theater. And so they decided to plan and build 
a new venue, and they built the Uptown Theater. They designed it. They built it initially with a seating capacity of 1,100. Wow. That <laughs> was huge. Yeah. You know, uh, it was you know, unheard of in that day. The biggest I'd seen prior to this was 800. So, uh, you know, they really went all out over that particular mm -hmm. theater. It opened in um, March 17th, 1950 with, uh, and Baby <laughs> Makes Three. And that's, I actually have seen that movie. It's been a long, long time ago, but uh, you know, a comedy, romance, whatever you want to call it, pretty good, pretty good flick. Um, the problem with this era, there wasn't a lot in the newspapers because I don't know if most of the papers from that uh, decade, I don't know, did the Texans burn down or we just don't have access to a lot of the years of the paper. So this is the only article that I've seen in the paper anywhere advertise, early advertising for the Uptown Theater. So maybe, you know, maybe there were some more, but um, in my research, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't pulled up any. And again, of course, you've all heard uh, of this movie here. Now, a lot of you are going to remember this. One of the most exciting things to come to Grand Prairie, uh, they decided to film Indian Paint with Johnny Crawford. Oh my God. The stories that the girls could tell about Johnny Crawford coming to town. <laughs> it was amazing. But we had a lot of locals that served as extras in the movie. Um, you know, and again, it's just something that happened that folks that have been here for a long time, that's just a story that everybody knows about. Now, the Silver Brothers and their sister Helen, they owned and operated the Uptown Theater uh, until it sold to Vernon Watson in 1962. Now, you sound like, why did they sit? Well, Vernon, they're all family. <laughs> they're all family somewhere. But Vernon, he bought it and he uh, ran it for a few years. And then in 1965, uh, Mrs. Fisher's daughter, who's Donna Easterling, a lot of you know her, she's local. Uh, lady here in town, an attorney who's been here for for years. Uh, she worked at the Uptown back when she was, you know, a smaller kid. Uh, she bought it and she operated it until 1991. Okay. Okay. Once she closed it down. The Uptown had a lot of different tenants. They had a church come in there for a while, try to use it as a church. That didn't work. Uh, they had a gentleman come in. He's going to make it the next you know, Grand Ole Opry. Uh, that really didn't work. Uh, we had another couple bought it and wanted to return it back to its old days, being a good family uh, theater. That didn't work out. Uh, the last time I went to the Uptown, Somebody had bought it and was showing Kung Fu flicks. <laughs> and a friend of mine went up there and watched a double feature of Kung Fu flicks that we couldn't understand, but they were funny. Uh, but eventually, uh, nothing else worked, and the theater sat vacant for almost uh, 10 years. And that, in 2005, the city finally stepped in. Uh, they decided to purchase the Uptown. Uh, they spent years doing extensive renovations to it. Uh, it reopened on November 8, uh, 2008 as a live venue theater and it has a <laughs> continually successful operation going today. It's booked what, a couple of years in advance almost. Just, almost. <laughs> uh, so so they're, having, they're having a really, really good run. Okay. Now before I go to the next slide which is basically an intermission slide and we can ask questions and comments and whatnot. I'd first like to introduce Jackie Mendoza. Uh, Jackie is the coordinator for the Uptown Stand Theater. Uh, she helped us put this together today and I just asked her if she just wanted to say a couple words about the Uptown oh, no. okay. before we finish up. We were going to have to public speak today. 
Okay, it wasn't the teachers, <laughs> not as good. Um, so I guess I'm a longtime Grand Prix resident, born and raised here, went to Florence Hill, Truman, graduated from South Grand Prairie. Um, I worked for the city for a couple of years. I worked at the Epic, and then the coordination job came available this year it, uh, up at the Uptown, so I just jumped on it. And I've learned probably more sitting here <laughs> than I have through any of the things I've found throughout the building, so I'm constantly trying to find pictures and old things and stories and, and really just this, so, um, so we can try and get pictures and things hung up in the in the lobby, just so whenever you come in, you kind of get a little bit of that history. So, Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> okay, intermission time. Uh, we have any can, can questions, comments? Yeah, somebody can turn the lights on, please. Yeah, does anybody have any questions or comments or stories? There, there's no second act. This is, we want to hear from yes, you. Yes, ma'am. I remember going to the Wings Theater when they had a feature called The Mummy. <laughs> and they had a guy dressed up as a mummy with uh, stuff all over his I'm body. Rapping. They asked everybody not to put their feet in the aisles. Well, I put my foot in the aisle and tripped him. Yes, <laughs> 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 uh, ma'am. One of my best friends was an Indian lady in the Johnny Crawford movies. And um, the last time I went to the Uptown was when uh, Kip's Big Boy was there. So that's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's been a while. Yeah, so. Yes, ma'am. I like to point out that we have right here today. She's me, Pat Lawson, whose mother was Helen Fisher and whose uncles were the silver. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah, I, I know. I, did, did I tell any lies? <laughs> Actually, I have to tell you about the advertising. My uncle Sherman and Jerry Silver would on Saturday get a bunch of kids, our ex-mayor and a bunch of other people would load onto the station wagon and deliver flyers to the houses. They had the rundown of what the movie was going to be for the next month. And so that's the way the advertising got out. Then the boys that did that, it was baby boys, got free pass to the show. And I worked at the show first at Wings because my mother said Donna gets to go to the uptown when they old did. you're older so you stay at the Wings, which made me mad. But I <laughs> and it was, a, I mean, two fifty for five hours is what we paid people and I got too. But I bought all my clothes in high school. So it's sad that you can't work like that today. Uh, but it was a different world. We had kitty shows where kids dropped off by mother sold different grocery stores and different beauty shops, you know, passes to give their people and we had movies in the middle of the night for L T V and uh wow. Tempo Fox for those of you who don't know. And it was just a different world. Well you know what's funny, uh talk about the free passes and whatnot. Just this afternoon my wife and I were eating at Jason's Deli. And we ran into Debbie and uh, James Bowden. Well, Debbie Bowden, her mom is, you know, uh, Miss Morton, who owned, her and her husband owned Bob Burger and Shake. If you live in Grand Prairie, you know all about Bob Burger and Shake. But she was telling me that Mr. Edelman owned that whole strip of properties, including Bob Burger and Shake, and that if you went into uh, Edelman's food store, you could get free, on Wednesdays, they'd give you a free Pass to the Uptown Theater for Saturday. My mother was a heck of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> My mother got on that stage and she was a pharmacist from her younger days. And I can't believe what she did. <laughs> we always, on behalf of the museum, if you've got stuff, especially related to the theaters, I think we'll, we would love to have it here. Well, I worked there. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. worked for her, and you were about one of my students. I know. <laughs> 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 so nice and I worked there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyone else uh, have any uh, comments, questions? Yes, yes, ma'am. Just one comment, and I posted this on Facebook I don't know, a few weeks back. I discovered, rediscovered autograph books that we all had as children in school, and uh, along with those, I discovered my parents had autograph books that, that had been packed away. And I got an autograph book when I was in the fourth grade. 
and I must have gone directly to the Wings Theater because Jerry Silvers was the first one to sign my autograph. Tell them what they paid you. Yeah, I got a dollar fifty for a six-hour shift. I want to remember the family. Anything else? Well, I've been, folks, I, I'm blown away that this many of you showed up to listen to, to the story. You didn't show up to listen to me, but you listened to, uh, showed up to listen to the story. I think it's a great story. I never knew, other than the Uptown and the Wings, I didn't know about any of those. Oh, yes, ma'am, bye. One more thing, I'd like to show of hands. Who ate a snow cone made from pickle juice? <laughs> <laughs> I got that because we have okay. good show by Mother Sherry Tyke. Oh, yeah. And so the pickles we sold, she didn't want to waste the pickle juice. Yeah. <laughs> so she did now, the, uh, juice. I, I, believe the gentleman next to me, Mr. Hall, you have a question? Yes. Or a comment? And then they made money on you. Oh, you have a question? My mom used to just at Wings Theater while she bought groceries. She couldn't go upstairs. That was the bad part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, a lot of people didn't realize that at the Uptown, one of the unique features of it is the crying room. You know, that uh, if your babies were crying or whatever, you could leave and go out and go into the crying room and you could still watch the show but you're not disturbing all the other patrons. And I thought that was a, a unique feature that I don't know that I, I've ever seen that in any others, but I, maybe some have it, but I haven't seen those. Any, any other questions, any other comments? And the double C? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I don't know what year it was exactly, but uh, to go to the movie theater was my mother and dad's first date. So I just always knew the Uptown Theater. I didn't know there were all of these, so I had no idea where they went. Yeah. <laughs> they walked. Yeah. My dad didn't have a walk. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, like I said, it, it's amazing, you know, when when you start researching things and finding out that, you know, gosh, eight different theaters in, in a two square block area. Yes, ma'am. Do you ma know anything about the drive-in? I've I've got something on all the drive-ins. That's that's another that's another another program. presentation because you got yeah, that one has the X-rated component. Well, actually, yeah, that's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, because we had you know we've had two down on this end, we've had three on that end. Uh, so yeah, that that's another story for for later. If I'd included those, we'd been here another thirty minutes. So. <laughs> Anything else? Great job. Well, again, yeah. thank you so much. I appreciate it.